Good evening. Hope everyone is doing well and had a, a freilich and perm and a beautiful Shabbos. Um, tonight we're learning. What are we doing here? Uh, we're on the bottom of Tzadik. <laughs> I should know where we are. We're on the bottom of Tzadik Chesam and Aleph at the Mishnah toward the end of the page. Uh, for five lines from the bottom. And tonight we'll uh, learn uh, the rest of Tzadi Ches and as well Daf Tzadi Tes. Um, I know that many of you will be sad as we exit some of these Kajim Gemaras and as we enter into Arve Psachim. I am not one of those people. I'm very excited about Arve Psachim and looking forward. Um, so we just have a couple of quick sigis till we get to the end of the parak at the bottom of Tzadi Tes and then we will... Uh, jump right in to learn most of the first Amud of Tzadi Tess. As you can see, if you flip through Arbe Psachim, a lot of the blot are a little bit shorter. And there's a reason for that, which is that if you look on any of the blot of uh, Arbe Psachim, you'll see that on the inner margin, there's also the Rashbam's commentary. The Rashbam, Rav Shmuel ben Meir, was a grandson of Rashi. And as you can tell, he writes in gr much greater volume. Uh, and therefore, the pages themselves of actual Gemara are um, by and large shorter. So it makes for the dafyomi a, a little bit easier in some ways, but there's more halacha to learn because it's a, a, most of this is halacha lemaisa, even what we're gonna learn tonight in our Reh Pesachim is halacha lemaisa. So let us get started. Um, we are five lines from the bottom of Sari Ches Amur Alev, coming to the end of this parak of Mishahoya. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah, ha-Pesach shenis arv bizvachim. Let's say that you have a korban Pesach that gets mixed up with other korbanos, kulan, all of these animals that are now mixed up, we don't know what's what. So all these animals that are mixed up, you have a korban Pesach with a whole host of other animals. The halacha is that all of them are yiru achi istavu, that they all have to graze until they become tame. And then v'yim karu, then you have to sell them. V'yavi bidmei hayavah and within each category of animal, you have to find out the cost, the greatest cost of each of them. Miminze from each particular min, v'bidmei hayavah shebahen miminze from each of those minim. V'yavsid hamoser mibesa, you're going to bring the equivalent of those animals and give them to the mikdash. So if you had a goat, get the most expensive goat. If you have a sheep, the most expensive sheep. Whatever it is, you have to buy the spits of each of them, and you will be the one who ends up taking the losses on that. You should have been more careful. I wonder what they did if they like put tags around their animals, you know, something to indicate whose is whose. There's so many animals, like we saw earlier in the Masechta, that there were 1,200 kidneys by Agrippas. There was talking uh, just a wild, a wild uh, 1.2 million. There was, yeah. It was a, mass, a massive number of, of korbanos. It's hard to keep track. Um, but the Gemara does say that the Kohanim was reason him, so they knew what they were doing. They must have had some type of system in place. Anyways, that's the ratio of the Mishnah, the safe of the Mishnah, nisar, nisar bebechoros. if, however, the Korban Pesach, which halachically speaking, is relatively similar to the Bechora, to the Bechoros Korban, and it's, uh, and it's sprinkling, and in some other areas, then it's smicha, and some other things, Rashi highlights them. If you look at the very bottom Rashi, or the second to last Rashi of the page, Dibur HaMaskel, Nisar Bebechoros, Shematan Daman, Umatan Dam HaPesach, Shove, Ve'ein Tenuve, Ve'ein Te'unen, uh, so the halachos by the Bechoros and by the Korban Pesach are very, very similar. That's why the Mishnah highlights and explicates the relationship specifically between the Korban Pesach and the, and the Bechoros, an animal that's a Bechor, because their halachos are quite similar as Rashi, uh, Rashi points out. So what happens if the Korban Pesach is Nisar Bechoros? There the Mishnah writes, bottom line of Tzadi Chesim Adalev, Reb Shimon Omer, im chaburas kohanim yochlu. If it's a chabur of kohanim, they can eat it because it's either a korban pesach or it's bechoros. But man of shach, they're allowed to eat it. The bechoros are limited to the to the kohanim, but here it would actually work out. So the Gemara on the top of Tzadi Chesim Abayis comes out of the gates with a question: There is one difference, one significant difference, I should say, between the world of korban pesach and the world of bechoros, and that is when we reach the threshold of nosar. By the world of Pesach, that's a much shorter time frame, day and the night up. However, when it comes to uh, the world of Bechoros, they have more time to eat it. So says the Gemara, if you treat the Korban Pesach and the Bechoros the same, then you've limited the Korban Pesach to be uh, to be similar to the Pesachim, in which case the expiration date is earlier. You're going to make things puzzle earlier than they need to be. Says the Gemara, Rib Shimon, remember Rib Shimon is the one who's quoted in our Mishnah, in the case of Nisar Bechoros, our Mishnah writes, Rib Shimon Omer, that the Kohanim can eat it. Rib Shimon, the Gemara says that Rib Shimon in our Mishnah 
follows his own shita. What is his own shita? To Amar, Mevian Kachim the base Absol Taka. We actually do hold that way, that we allow for the shortening of amount of time you're allowed to eat the Bechoros when it gets mis- mixed up with the Korban Pesach. How does it work? Third line, Sari Chesim Beis, the Mishnah writes. This Mishnah is found in Maseches Zvachim, and the Mishnah writes, Ditnan, Asham Shenis Arib Bishlamim, Asham is Kodshe Kodshim, and it's Nis Arib Bishlamim, which are Kodshim Kalim. So an Asham usually can only be brought on the northern side of the Mizbeach. So here, what do we do if these two get mixed up? So says the Gemara in the name, in the, quoting a Mishnah, in the name of Rib Shimon, Rib Shimon Omer, Yishchetu Bitzafon, you take the strict of the two. By the Korban Shlamim, it could technically be brought anywhere in the Azor, as long as it's a Makom Kadosh within the Beis Hamikdash. It doesn't have to be on the north, but by the Asham, the, I may have said that wrong, the Asham can only be brought on the north, Shlamim can be brought in any holy place. So we, we just take the strict line. We bring the Korban on the Tzafon, just like the Asham would require. And not only that, but he also adds, um, he also adds, V'yochlu kechomer shebahen. We also, in regards to expiration date, in regards to Nosar, we also will eat only kechomer shebahen, namely with the shorter time frame to make sure we don't violate any isurin. So we see explicitly in a Mishnah, explicitly how Rav Shimon holds in our Mishnah. So basically, Rav Shimon in our Mishnah is lishitaso to the Mishnah in Maseches Zvachim, that we are allowed to uh, to create a scenario where we, uh, when we have the Asham that's mixed up uh, with Ashlamim, it's similar to the Korban Pesach that's mixed up with the Bechoros, and we are allowed to be, uh, it's a, a Kula in some way, uh, and a Chumra in another, but basically the point is that we're not bothered by the question of the Gemara, that we're making the Bechoros, that we're making the edibility time frame of the Bechoros shorter, that's okay. We have to take the Chumras of both when they're mixed up to make sure that we can still be Yotze either of them. And this bra- Mishnah is not done yet, it says the Gemara, fifth, sixth line of the Gemara, um, the Ravana and said back to Rav Shimon, I disagree with you. They say, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to shorten the edibility time frame, the Nosar time frame of the Bechor. You're not allowed to do that. So says the Gemara, now that we're done with this Mishnah, and we've utilized this Mishnah and milked it for what it's worth to learn that it's Rav Shimon Lashitaso, that when our Mishnah writes that by the Korban Pesach, that Rav Shimon says if it's mixed with Bechoros, it can be eaten by the Kohanim. We saw the same thing in a, the Mishnah Zvachim on the Asham and when the Shlamim were mixed up, but then the Rabbanon disagreed. So says the Gemara, the Rabbanon, Hechi Avdina. Well, wh- well, what would they do if the Asham and the Shlamim were mixed up? So answers the Gemara, Amar Rabba, Namtin, Lo, Ad Sheyomimu. We're going to wait until, it's really, it should be plural. We should wait until these animals, because it's two animals that get, get mixed up, it's Sheyomimu, what does the word shiyomamu mean? It's from the word mum, an interesting phraseology. Um, and also we've been using different language in previous, uh, like in our mission, it said ad shiyistaev until it generates a, a tumah here, the language, just a unique word, but it's shoresh is lachora uh, from the word mum. So it's ad shiyomamu, v'yabi behema shmena, and you should bring an animal that's fat. This is the equivalent to an animal that's marbled. It shouldn't be just that it's fatty. It's not a veal. It's a more expensive animal than Mephorshim points out. The lame one, and the, the person bringing this animal should say, Kol Pesach, wherever my Pesach is, I don't know which animal is which, but wherever the Pesach is, Tachula Leha, Tachula Leha Dehai, then the Kedusha should be transferred to Ever Achili, Betoras, Bechor Balmum. And we should treat it like a Bechor Balmum. A Bechor Balmum kind of straddles two worlds. On the one hand, because it's a Balmum, it's technically Chulin. But at the same time, Rashi highlights, the Rishonim highlight that there is still some stringency. It has to be eaten carefully and by Kohanim, etc. So that's basically how the Rabbanon get out of it without shortening the time frame of the of the uh, korban, which is a bechor, and that brings us to the next mishnah, and as well, uh, uh, a, it's a very long mishnah. It's almost to the bottom of the page. This mishnah starts here, and it goes till three lines to the bottom of the page. It's the last mishnah in the parak, um, and this mishnah is going to discuss what happens if a uh, the korban pesach is already brought, and then either the korban gets lost by the people who are in charge of the chabura. I mean, that's really bad. Right, you, your korban's done already. You're going home to eat it bechabur and you lose it. That's not gishmak. You got to be more careful. But the gemara, <laughs> yeah, who had who had the korban pesach that we waited once a year for that has an iser curries? A little bit. You got to wait for the wine. Got to wait for the wine. We're going to learn about wine in the first mission of pesach, and we'll get there in a few minutes. So, we should have, we should have. Although I think some of us are still marginally intoxicated from part. Says the Mishnah, 10 lines down or so, Let's say there's a Chabura, everything's shechted already, everything's done, we're ready to go. 
We're on the top of Sariches and the Bay is right at the new Mishnah. So there, Chabur Shabbat Pesach, what's the halacha? The Amru Echad, and they said to one guy, Ah, oh, man, shoot, we lost our Korban Pesach. Could you do me a favor? They say to one guy, Say Uvakesh, go out and find one, Ushchot Aleinu, and go and bring another Korban Pesach for us. This is the case of the Mishnah. So the guy is a good soldier, he does his job. So he goes out and he finds an animal in the dust Shechita, brings the next Korban. But concurrently, at this, he didn't know this, but while he was bringing his korban, they did the same exact thing. They sent him out to go find the korban pesach because they lost animal A. So they sent this one guy to go find animal B and they shechted animal C. So A is gone, lost and gone. B was shechted by the one individual and animal C, a totally new animal, was shechted by the group. So let's say there were 10 people in the chabura. Uh, person number one, let's call him Ruvain. So Ruvain went, to, when he was the one who was sent out to go shecht and he did his job. But the group also found an animal. So they did the same exact thing. So now you have two animals that were karev as a Korban Pesach for this one Chabura. Well, that's a problem because how do we deal with the fact that people are supposed to be Manui on a Korban? Is the guy who brought the Korban for an- Ruvain, if Ruvain brought the Korban for animal B, can he eat from animal C when he comes back? So that's what the Mishnah is struggling with. So it says the Mishnah as follows. Im shalom nishchad rishon. If Ruvain's animal was shechted first, the soldier, the one guy who was sent out to go do his job. So then, who ochel mishalo? He, of course, can eat from that animal, what we've been calling animal B. And he had them in mind as well. Of course, everyone, if that animal was shechted first, you're good to go. Right, then the other group shechted animal C later. So what? But the first animal that was really the Korban Pesach, it was done b'shlichus. And everyone's manui on that Korban. Everyone's allowed to eat that Korban Pesach. But what if, im shalahen nishchad Shown, but let's say that the group, the other nine people, the other brothers, the other members of the Chabur, they shechted the animal. Uh, if their animal was shechted first, then heim ochlen mishalahen, then of course they are allowed to do their thing. They can eat up from that animal. But who ochel mishalo? But he who just shechted a korban by himself, he didn't know the other group brought their korban first. The other group uh, brought their korban at nine, fi- at, at let's say at three p.m. He brought his korban at three fifteen. He didn't know he brought his korban at three fifteen p.m. So he didn't have in mind to eat the other animal because they asked him to do this korban. So he's not money on the korban. So then he's not. No, no, they weren't. They didn't see each other. We have, we have to assume the logistics. You're asking a good question of Matthias. They didn't see each other. They weren't standing there. They didn't know which korban was which. You couldn't tell necessarily. So no, he didn't know. So the halacha is, if the group's korban, animal C, was shechted first, so then, then the nine, the extra people in the chabura are allowed to eat from that newest korban, animal C, who ochel mishalo, and the uh, ruvain can eat from animal B. If we don't know which animal was brought first, could have been animal B, animal C, Ruvain's animal or the group's animal. One third of the way down, what does that mean? At the same exact second. <laughs> it's an unbelievable concept. It's just as, just as well you may have said, but there must have been some kind of Messias to know that an animal could have been brought at the same exact time. So if that was the case, so then who ochel mishalo, he can eat his own, but behem enam ochlen imo, v'shalahen yetze lebeis asreifa, but upturn milasos pesach sheni. Because their minui status is very unclear. That's very unclear because really they should have been with Ruvain, but they brought one at the same time. So which one do we give precedence to? So he is allowed to eat it. The one guy can eat. He's the only guy, Pasha, that he's Manui on the Korban. That's obvious. But the other nine guys in the Chabur, it's unclear because they brought animal C at the same time. So they're, they're not allowed to eat the animal. But, but as we've learned, there are scenarios in which people who are at least in theory able to eat, not a Cholo or a Zakein, if they're in theory able to eat, but there are technical reasons why they cannot eat their korban, it's not ma'ake of the korban pesach. They can't eat, but they're yotze, and therefore, as the Mishnah indicates here, upturin milasos pesach sheni. We're right by the uh, uniquely inserted tosvos into the middle of the tzura sadaf. Let's continue. That was case number one of the Mishnah. Case number two, Amar lahen. He says to them, single, this is individual to the group. He says to them, imicharti, if I'm late, Please have me in mind when you go bring your korban. I'm just coming from uh, from 14, uh, I don't want to get into the halachic issues, from 14 mil away, from within Modi'in. I'm very close by, I can make it, but sometimes there's traffic. Whenever I get there, I get there, but please have me in mind. Meanwhile, you got there quicker, 
uh, or the Mishnah seems to present a case where he couldn't find an animal, whatever it is. But the point is that now this individual who would ask the other nine guys, he asked all of his brothers, please bring the animal for me if I'm late. And then Ruben brought his own animal. Um, then So then, that's our case, is where one person asks the group, I'm going to be late, please take care of me as it relates to the Korban Pesach. If the group's Korban could be brought first, then, Classic. This is exactly what he had asked for. He said, if I'm going to be late, please include me in your korban. That's a perfect manui status. He's, a, he's one, of the, one of the groupies of this particular korban. Perfect. That's good to go. But right toward the end of this tosvos, we're right in the middle of the page. But if his korban was brought first, why did he bring one? It was such a bad idea. He shouldn't have brought one because he could have been Yosef with the other people. Fine. But he brought one. So then, who ochel mishelo behein ochel mishelo hen? Then he's no longer a part of their korban. He clearly separated himself by bringing his own korban. Behein, and they can eat from their own. Okay. But if in this case where I ask a group of people, I ask all of you, I'm going to be late, please bring the Korban Pesach. What an exciting idea to bring a Korban Pesach. It's a remarkable thing. It's an unbelievable thing to even have these conversations. It's unbelievable. Just a few weeks out. So if, if we don't, if I don't know which one was brought first, so then what's the din? Hey, Nochlin Nishelohen. They're, of course, allowed to eat their own. Everyone had clear intention to eat from this korban. They're all manu. He's not allowed to eat at all. The shelo and his animal, just like in the previous case, because there was a huge unknown status about this. We, we don't really know where the manui status would fall out. And that's case number two, two-thirds of the way down. Let's continue. Let's say that one man says to the group, the amru lo. And they say to each other, I'm going to take care of you, and you're going to take care of me. Whoever gets to it first, that's the one who's going to bring the carbon Pesach. That's what the Gemara says, the Mishnah, the rites. So then, Ochlan Kulan Mina Rishon, if the fir- whatever the first animal is, now we don't care who brings it. Is it the, the Ruvain or the rest of the group? We don't care. Whichever animal's first, that is the animal that everyone can eat on, because everyone had intention to be a part of that, of that, uh, of that Chabura. Perfect. V'imein Yadua Ezim and Rishon. If we don't know which one came first, then Shnehan Yotzin Lebesa Srefa, then all of them are tossed. That's a big problem. What's missing from the Gemara? What's missing from the Mishnah? What's missing is whether or not they were Yotze the Korban. So seemingly, if we had to play the riff, like if you play the riff card, we're, we're learning by omission. So the Mishnah doesn't seem to say that it's, uh, yes, it's Yotze Lebesa. Would they be Yotze? So you could talk it out and learning. On the one hand, they did the Korban, but really everyone was thinking about. We're supposed to be thinking about other people, but you should be Yotze yourself. Maybe, maybe not. Unclear from the Mishnah. Says the Gemara, it's case number. It just means that the animal has to be burned. Else we know that they're shechted already. This Rika is done already. Yeah, it's just hard to tell because it's already said twice. Yeah, in theory, in theory, the zrika should have been functional, but the problem here is that uh, even if you do a full korban with, with zrika, but there's no one manui on the korban, it's zero. So that's what's murky here. And the, and the Mishnah indicated in the two previous cases that they were yotze, the din. So I would have inferred, I, mean, I may be wrong, but I'm saying the pashtas of the Mishnah would have implied that they were not yotze, the korban pesa. I think we're up to case four. We're two thirds of the way down, maybe a little bit more. Lo amar lahen, velo amar amru lo. Nobody said anything about anybody. It's just, you know, we're all friends. We all, we typically have the meal together. So what is your silence? Is, what is your shtika in this case? We'll learn a big muster from this one. The Gemara opens today. So the halacha is, ein achroin zeh You're not, a, you have no impact on one another. Whatever you do affects you. Whatever they do affects them. There's no standard assumption in a group. Oh, there's a whole bunch of us in the room. There's no standard assumption that we impact each other until we expressly indicate what we want from one another as it relates to Korban Pesach. What about uh, So let's say five of us are Chabura one and five of us are Chabura two. The animals are identical twins. Can't tell the difference anymore. What should we, this is after the korban is shechted already. Okay, fine. What do we do? So everybody grabs one korban. And they do a swap in the group. So let's say group A was people one, two, three, four, five, and group B was people six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So you'll take number eight and swap them with number three so that you have the groups are a little bit mixed. And this is the svara that they'll say to one another. Well, they'll say about their korbanos. If this is really ours, then you're going to retract your hand from yours and you'll be yotze with yours. And similarly, let's say that you have multiple groups of five each or of 10 each. Um, they do the same technique where they basically negotiate, not negotiate, it's kind of like a tznai of some kind where basically they'd say, if this animal is correct, then everybody's with me. Fine. What about Shnaim Shenis Arbu Pishem? Two individuals, their korbanos get mixed up with one another. They take uh, animals for themselves. Each of them picks an animal. We add in another person from outside, just stam a person to add to the mix. Uh, we'll see why in the Gemara. Each of them does that and they bring another person. And then they flip flop the people. And here is the Svara that they say if my animal is correct, if this is really the right animal, then you can partake of mine. Okay. Fine. So these are the all, whole bunch of variations on the theme of getting your korban pesach all mixed up after the korban is done. Note to self: Pesach is coming up. Please, God, we should have a base on mikdash. And if we do, pay attention to your korban. Keep your eyes on the prize. This is a once a year thing. We don't get it that often. Um, and, but it's also a din karis. We should pay attention because there, there comes up with a lot of halachic issues. Would we be relevant for a Pesach Sheni? Depends what your, what your mistake is. We've seen a lot about this. It's not always so glut that you're able to bring a Pesach Sheni. Sometimes you're yote, but you can't eat it. We want to be able to eat it. We have dinner and nechal ala sova. We have so many halachas that we're trying to fulfill Pesach, Matzo, Mara. We know we saw earlier in the Masechta that Hafalpi, that it, let's say there's a case where a person was yotze with their korban pesach, but they don't have the basar. So there still is a din of matzah in a chalami, absolutely. But we want to do it right. We want to do it right. Uh, I just had my I just had my tefillin checked. So I asked the, the sofa, I said, How are my tefillin? And he said, They're kosher. Kind of part of about it. I asked Rabbi Robinson, Am I supposed to get new tefillin? <laughs> We, there, I, I don't. I haven't. I don't know what's going to happen yet. I, I have to get them checked again, actually. But, but we want to do it right. We want to do. We want to try and find the right way to do it. So the right, got to pay attention to your korban. This whole mishnah should be irrelevant to us in your Hashem, practically speaking, because we should pay attention to our korbanos. Says the Gemara Tzadikes on the base, three lines from the bottom. Tana Rabbanon, Tana Rabbanon. The rabbis teach us in a Tosefta. A tosefta here in this Masechta. Uh, just to be clear, the Tosefta is a separate book. If you flip to the back of the Masechta, you'll see that there's a totally separate book called Tosefta, and it has its own commentaries. And it's givaldic when you actually see them in context. In fact, sometimes you'll see a Tosefta quoted in our Gemara, which is not a perfect reflection of how it was written in the Tosefta that was actually written in the Tosefta. It's a separate set of Svarim. So the Mishnayis were written by Rabbi Yehuda HaNasi, famously, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, and the Tosefta was written by Levi and Bar Kapara. These were just the next generation. It is Tanaic in nature, even though technically they are Amoraim, but all the information was collated. They, they didn't author it per se as much as they collected, but when we say that there's a Tosefta, it's coming from another book. It's coming from another book of equivalent, uh, an equivalent to Mishnah it's what we refer to loosely as Torah Satanaim. Within the Tanaim, there are four sets of authorship. There's Mishnayis, Brysos, Toseftas, Midrash, Chazal, Mishnayis, we know. Toseftas, we just spoke about, a separate book, Levi and Bar Kapara. Brysos are not in a book. They're only found scattered throughout Shas. And Midrash, Chazal, as well, are similar to Brysos, but they're more um, Midrashic in their nature. Nevertheless, this is a Tosef, the bottom of Sadiq Hasim and Beis. Amar Lahen, Amr Lo, Ochel Min Arishan. We said in our Mishnah that where I say I'm going to take care of you and you say you're going to take care of me, we're limited. The only thing we can do is if uh, the first korban was taka brad, and then if we knew which one it was, fine, then we could benefit from it. What if we said nothing? What if we said nothing at all? Lo amar lehen, lo amar lo. So there you're better off. Why? Because just bring your korban and eat it. <laughs> but you don't lose out on the possibility of being yosek. Says the Gemara, Eina nachroin ze al zen. As we turn to the top of Tzari Tessam, this parak is going to end with a shtikl moser. Mikan amru chachamim. 
Of course, it is a brilliant idea to be quiet. Don't put yourself in a set. You're talking too much. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to take care of me by the Korban Pesach. And in the end, we mess each other over because we both bring the Korban Pesach at a similar time. So, just be quiet. Be quiet. You would have been better off by saying nothing. And then, of course, <laughs> certainly those who are, who are not worthy to speak. Uh, they're not so bright to start with, uh, not bright in, in, in an IQ kind of way, but they don't have a lot to offer. So they for sure should be quiet. It's definitely a good thing to be quiet. They would have just been better off halachically. Which one? When he is quiet, so he's thought of as being a chacham. Better to be yeah. thought, better to be thought, right? Like, like, fools, be yeah, to yeah. It's so true. And we, we I, I, I mean, we're all guilty of this, I presume, to some degree. We all talk too much about ourselves, about whatever. It's better to just, uh, you know. I was talking to someone today about uh, uh, Yisod and parenting that I learned from my rabbim. So I said, you could preach all you want. You could preach all you want, but at the end of the day, they're going to watch you. So, and more about Adva, say Harbe, all the books you read at the end of the day, a significant percentage, Ruba de Ruba, of the impact that we will have on those around us is by action, way more than it will be with, than with words. Let's continue. We're four lines down, Tzadi Tesamadal. Lema mas nisin de loker Yehuda. This is a tough machlokes in the Tanaim. Maybe our Mishnah that we just learned, this lengthy Mishnah on Sadi Chesam and Beis, cannot be like Rabbi Huda. The Tanya, the Brisa writes, "V'im yimat habayit miyos mise." What does that pasuk mean? Malamit shemismatin v'holchin u'bilvan sheyehei echad mibnei chabura kayim. Here he holds a unique sheet of Dibir of Yehuda that there must be one of the original people in the Chabura. What did our Mishnah say? Bring a guy from the Shuk. Rabbi Yehuda says that can't be because there has to be an original. It, it, what could happen? It, then the original guy could leave. Who's left with the Korban? The newbie. <laughs> so that can't be, says Rabbi Yehuda. So it must be our Mishnah is not like him. Let's continue this, Brisa. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Bilvachlo, Yanichu, Esapesach, Kemoshi. No, 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 that's not correct. You just can't leave it with nobody, but we do allow for the for the stranger to be added. This is, I, it took me many, many uh, times of reading this to figure that I had no idea what this is talking about. Very difficult machlokas on the surface, but what we're talking about is whether or not we can include new people in the Chabura this late in the game, because if at the end of the day, it's down to one person, if the person's a newbie, so Rabbi Huda won't have it. So therefore our Mishnah cannot be like Rabbi Huda because our Mishnah included someone from the Shuk. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, I disagree. I feel Utema Rabbi Yehuda. We could even say that our Mishnah is like the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Kevan de Amar Rabbi Yehuda in Shochan es Pesach ala Yochid meikar la'amnu yacharin abahadei koi ukeechad mibnei chabur adami. He says no. You're not allowed to be alone. And what must pshat be in our Mishnah? That when we include this guy from the Shuk, it's ke'echad mibnei chabur adami. Once we include him, he's no longer a newbie. Now he's part of the now he's part of the team. Now he's part of the chabura. So therefore, it's not a problem. That's how we would understand our Mishnah. That when our Mishnah says that you bring in someone from the Shuk, Rabbi Huda, within the name of Rabbi Yochanan, it must be that this new guy transforms into being a regular. And therefore, it's okay. Therefore, that you, our Mishnah could even be like him. Amar Ravashi, it's also Maduyak this way in our Mishnah. Amar Ravashi, Masnisa Nami Deka, De Katani, our Mishnah writes, our Mishnah. We said that if you have um, five chaburos, each of which have five people, and then we said you had to swap people to make sure that everyone was part of each chabura, shel chamisha in, about shel chamisha the arba, lo, we don't trade out when one of the groups will be totally empty. Why not? It can't be that there's nobody left in there. That's how we just understood Rabbi Yehuda within Rabbi Yochanan, therefore Shema Mina. And that's how we know that our Bryce says Meduyak and Rabbi Yochanan's right. It could even be that our Mishnah is like the Shita Rabbi Yehuda. Hadran Allah Mishayatami Slikal Pesach Sheni. Hadran Allah Mishayatami Slikal Pesach Sheni. Hadran Allah Mishayatami Slikal Pesach Sheni. Ratzon should come back to this daf in at least seven and a half years. <laughs> For anyone who wants a summary, the halachos here are very clearly written out uh, in the bottom, the small font. We are not reading it. Let us start a brand new uh, Amud and a brand new parak, the parak of Arve Psachim, a parak that is very well known, that is very well known in Shas uh, and is learned in the yeshivas. Uh, and uh, so much halacha, I said, jam packed even on today's diet. Even the first Mishnah is chock full of things that we're so used to and familiar with um, and uh, very, very excited. Let's get started. The Mishnah writes, 
Arve Psachim, Samuch Mincha, on the eve of Pesach, close to Mincha, we got to get into what does Samuch Mincha mean? Which Mincha are we talking about? Mincha Gdol, Mincha Tana, we'll get into this at another point. The halacha is, Lo Yochal Adam From that time, you should not eat until it gets dark. Why not? Says Rashi, top line, Dibur Hamascha Lo Yochal. Kedei Sheyi Achel Matzah Shel Mitzvah L'Tei Avon. Because a person should eat the matzah of mitzvah with appetite. And look at the next three words of Rashi, subject to a massive discussion. Mishum hidur mitzvah. Hidur mitzvah is a keli van vehu. Hidur mitzvah is to say that there's many ways you could do it. You can get the standard esrog and you can get the more significant esrog. What's the hidur by matzah? We don't talk about a hidur by matzah to make it more beautiful per se. The hidur is that your achila, which is the mitzvah, the achila needs to be behidur. And that is done b'te'avon when you're actually excited about it. Continues the Mishnah, second line. Afilu Yisrael lo yochal ad The famous halach of Heseva, that one is obligated, and a, a discussion of who's included in this, one is obligated to do Heseva, to lean to the left when they are eating. Uh, it doesn't say where they're going to be leaning but or what they're leaning for, because we haven't spoken about food yet within the Mishnah, but they should not eat until they are yesev. Um, and as well, they should not drink less. They should not have less than four cups of yayin, even if they need to then take money from the community in order to do so, that is considered to be appropriate. Again, so much to discuss here. Uh, says the Gemara, opening with a quick question. My area, Arve Psachim. What are you talking about, Arve Psachim? I don't understand. What about every year of Shabbos? We shouldn't go into Shabbos stuffing our faces. That's not appropriate either. After all, the Tanya, the Brisa writes, a person should make sure that when they go into Arab Shabbos, when, when they go into Shabbos, when they go into Yadav, they should be hungry. So what is this whole mission about? Yantif is Yantif. I, I need you to specify Arab Pesachim. Why? Why? Who cares about Arab Pesach? It's the same thing as every other Shabbos and every other Yantif. Dibir Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi Omer Ochel Vaholich Ad Shetechshach. So by the end of this price, Rabbi Yossi, of course, would not be a problem for us, but it does seem to be that Rabbi Yehuda is a problem. How does Rabbi Yehuda understand our Mishnah? Our Mishnah says in Erev Pesach, you're not allowed to eat from Samach Minah Mincha until it gets dark, because we should make sure that we are, um, the, the Mishnah doesn't say this, but we know from Rashi, from the Rishonim, to make sure that, we're, that we have the Hidr Mitzvah, that we're Derech Te'avon. But are the Bryce writes by Erev Shabbos and Erev Pesach in the name of Rabbi Yehuda, the same exact thing. So I'm a Rav Huna. Rav Huna gives an answer. Lo, you've misunderstood. Tzricha, we actually need our Mishnah. Why? Ela le Rav Yossi. What does Rav Yossi say in this new b'risa about Erev Shabbos and Erev Yantiv? What does he say there? He says, the Omer ochel v'holich ad shetechshach. He says, Yutaka can eat on Erev Pesach and on Erev Yantiv all the way until it gets dark. Namely, the din of nichnas l'tayavon is specific to matzah. Not Shabbos and not Yontif, it's only Matzah. Let's continue in the Gemara. That's where Rav Yossi says his lenient din. Stuff your face, eat the kugel, eat the chicken, eat some chal and have a good time. Zagazun. Until it gets dark out, no problem at all. Aval! Be'erev ha-pesach mishum chayuva de mitzvah, mishum chayuva de matzah, excuse me, mode, Rav Yossi would be uh, strict by Pesach, even though he's otherwise lenient by Arve Psachim, by, uh, even though he's otherwise lenient by Erev Shabbos and by Erev Pesach. The Gemara gives another answer. Rav Papa Amar no afilu tema Rav Yehuda. We even have a Chiddush within our Mishnah for Rav Yehuda. Af al that they say the same thing. Our Mishnah says that you're not allowed to eat from Samach Lemincha. Rav Yehuda says that by Erev Shabbos and Erev Yantiv, you're not allowed to eat from Samach Lemincha. So they're the same. So how does Rav Papa explain this? We're going to say his sheet and tomorrow night. We'll begin with a question on him. So he says, Ah, oh, so by Shabbos and Yom Tov, the language there was min ha mincha um, But by Arbe Psachim, what does it say? It says Samuch lemincha. So Aval by Arbe Pesach, Afilu Samuch lemincha nami aser. Um, and that, uh, that's the end of the sheet. Afilu Samuch lemincha nami aser. So that's how Rav Papa explains our conflicting Mishnah, where we started from today with our, with Arbe Psachim here with this new parak and the Sheet of Rabbi Yehuda. 
our Mishnah says that by Arab Pesach, Samach Lemincha, you're not allowed to eat. And the Mishnah, the Bryce, according to Rabbi Yehuda by Arab Shabbos and Arab Yontif, says that it's Mina Mincha Ulemala. So says the Gemara, you got to look at the language. It's a very gentle difference in the language. By Shabbos and Yom Tov, Rabbi Yehuda was talking about Mina Mincha Ulemala. And by Arab Pesach, look at the top line of Tzadik Testament base. It's Samach Lemincha, even before, a little bit earlier, or a little bit more Machmer. Let's stop right here. Mir Tashem will pick up tomorrow with just one blot, right? With just one blot, just Daf Kuf. And it's not a very long blot. Uh, and looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night at 8.40. Wishing you all a beautiful night. <laughs>